Thank you very much for having me uh, here this evening, for inviting me to your, uh, this event, the Box of Books. I really greatly appreciate it. Um, and it's, it's really amazing for me to see all the hard work that you've done, uh, all the, the many auction items and everyone coming out here tonight uh, to benefit the Afghan Canadian Community Center. Uh, the photos that you see on the screen here are photos of the Afghan Canadian Community Center. So you can see uh, our director, uh, Isan, who's on the left there, um, and our students, and some of the, the difference that we've helped to make with, uh, with your support. Um, I'm, I'm the president of the Canadian International Learning Foundation, and uh, one of the co-founders of the Afghan School Project, uh, which helped to establish the Afghan Canadian Community Center uh, back in 2006. Uh, it's the, the main Canadian initiative to provide support to the Afghan Canadian Community Center, which is a, a women's school in Kandahar, which is where Canadian uh, soldiers are also, also stationed. Um, the project began back in 2006 when uh, my, my girlfriend Andrea Cavalli and I read an article in the Toronto Star entitled Behind the Burqa, and it talked about an educator in Kandahar named Isan Ula Isan uh, and his students, the women students uh, of his school at the time. And I'm not sure what it was about that article. It talked about um, just how much hope they had for the future and how they were doing so much, but they had so very little. And I'm not sure what it was about that article over any other article that you might read, but it, it really did touch uh, me and Andrea, and we decided that we wanted to get involved. Um, so we wrote to the reporter who had done the story, and we asked for Isan's contact information, and he put us in touch with Isan. And, and originally, we, we thought, you know, we'll help him by a computer or something like that, you know, just something, something small. But by the time that we wrote to him, his situation was even more difficult than before. And uh, many of the teachers were going without their salaries, um, they were working under, you know, they were being threatened because of the work they were doing to educate women. Computers were breaking down. They were forced to, to cancel the transportation system that helped keep the students safe. And I, I realized then that I, I really wanted to do more um, to help. And so we talked to his son and he said, you know, we can't bring the students to the school right now, but maybe we can bring the school to the students. And the idea for the Afghan Community and Community Center was born. And, uh, so what we decided to do was establish a small school that would actually work underground. It was just based in a house uh, in residential Kandahar. There was an area where the students could just walk to safely. Um, so we sent over the, the money to, to get things started. Thankfully, money in Afghanistan goes a very long way to helping students. Um, so we sent over enough money to help him uh, run the school for about six months. And we started with about 80 students. We didn't have much. There was no fanfare, no opening ceremony, no media or anything like that. We just started with 80 students and a, and a small handful of teachers and a, and a small house in the middle of residential camp hire. But Isan has been teaching for a long time. He's a fantastic teacher. He just needed the resources um, to do what came naturally to him. And it wasn't long before the Afghan Canadian Community Center started to grow and grow and grow. And 100 students became 300 students. The community came to Isan and they said, listen, we'd really like for men to attend the school as well, so we opened our doors to men in the evenings, charged them modest student fees so that we could help cover the cost of the program. And it wasn't long before 300 students became 600 students, all studying subjects like business management, computing, English, healthcare, you know, the subjects that are in highest demand by the international community looking to reconstruct Afghanistan. And many of our students were hired right away um, to, to, with really high paying jobs that could actually not only support themselves, but help support their families as well. Um, then we were fortunate enough that about a year ago, uh, we were able to get funding uh, from the Canadian International Development Agency, and we received about $70,000 from them, which has been tremendous. It helped uh, rent this, this new building that you see here that has about 15 rooms and has capacity for about 500 <coughs> students at any given time. Uh, the Afghan School Project continued to grow as well, and after a few months, Andrea and I were joined by some of our friends from school who also wanted to get involved. And then we posted some advertisements online for other volunteers. And we've just been amazed by how generous people have been with their time for this project. We were featured in, the, uh, in a CBC documentary. And uh, shortly afterwards, uh, Stacy got in touch with me. John Alexander from Agnes and Morrison got in touch with, with us as well. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means to know, for, for myself to know, that you care about our work and you want to help our students. But even more, I can't tell you how much it means to our students to know that people on the other side of the world that they've never met care about them. You know, when even through the threats, even through the violence, 
the gunfire, the explosions in the distance, it happens on a, a daily basis, it, it lights a candle of hope for them. It helps them get up, it helps them go to school under the most difficult of circumstances. It gives them hope. It really matters and they so deeply appreciate it.